Nos encontramos en la calle Travis, aquí en el centro de la ciudad de Houston, Texas, justo en las oficinas, desde donde se entabla la defensa legal del ex gobernador de Tamaulipas, Tomás Yarrington Rubalcaba. Hace unos momentos platicamos con el licenciado Joel Androfi, quien tiene a cargo precisamente la defensa del ex gobernador y nos habla acerca de este juicio que se estaría llevando próximamente en la ciudad de Bronzeville, Texas. Eh, gracias, gracias, licenciado, por esta entrevista. Eh, ¿Cómo inicia todo este proceso para que finalmente el gobierno de los Estados Unidos haga estos señalamientos en contra del ex gobernador Tomás Yarrington? Bueno, well, to get an indictment against an individual, the prosecutors present evidence to a group of individuals called the grand jury, and they present this evidence without the defense having any opportunity to challenge it. They look at the evidence and decide whether to formally charge somebody. But generally speaking, it's the prosecutors that make the decisions because most of these cases are too complicated and sophisticated for your average person to understand whether there's a criminal charge that should come out of it. So the prosecutors prepare the indictment. They give it to the grand jurors and say, here's the indictment, sign your name to it. We think that there's enough criminal charges here. So in reality, The grand jurors make the decision, but in practicality, the prosecutors tell them what to do. And the defense does not have any opportunity to challenge witnesses. They don't have any opportunity to do anything to uh, reduce the charges or eliminate the charges. It's a one-sided process. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué no se tuvo esta oportunidad? Well, that's the way the systems worked for hundreds of years. That's the uh, justice system that came out of England. So it's the way that the American government pursues criminal cases through a grand jury. It's supposed to be a filter. It's supposed to be a buffer between, you know, to make sure that people aren't charged unfairly, but it doesn't work that way because prosecutors just make their mind up and then they just use the grand jury to rubber stamp what they want. Esto no es normal. It's normal process. It's unfair, but it's normal. It's, it's, it's that way in the federal system. It's that way in the state system. Okay. Um, ¿Cuál es el estatus legal del ex gobernador Yarrington en los Estados Unidos? Governor Yarrington, over a year ago, was asked to leave by immigration in the United States because they basically canceled his visa. And okay. he was told to leave the United States and don't come back. So he was removed from the United States by the United States government over a year ago while he was being investigated. Usted comentó el 5 de diciembre en la conferencia de prensa en México que hasta ese momento no había orden de arresto en contra del ex gobernador. ¿En este momento ha cambiado esta situación? Uh, that's what I've been told. I've been told that uh, there was a warrant, but I've not seen anything yet. So I've not even, the government hasn't even approached me at all on any of this case. I got an indictment from a reporter. I've not seen a warrant. I've not seen an official indictment from the government. Uh, I've seen nothing yet from the authorities. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo se encuentra el ex gobernador Yarrington eh, de estado de ánimo, de salud? ¿Tiene alguna información en este sentido? My understanding that he's doing fine. He's very much alert, aware of what's going on, and uh, monitoring the situation. Beyond ah, that, I don't know. El juicio, eh, licenciado, está eh, previsto a realizarse en la ciudad de Bronzeville, Texas. ¿Por qué? Well, the prosecutors, after they get the grand jury to indict somebody, The prosecutors select where the grand jury is going to be. In this situation, the prosecutors selected a grand jury that was sitting in Brownsville. They could have selected a grand jury sitting in other cities, but they wanted to pick the location where some of the property that Governor Yarrington allegedly was involved in was located. So there has to be a connection between the accusations and where the charges are going to be brought. Uh, ¿Se tiene prevista alguna fecha para el inicio? No. The only way that tentative date would be set is by the court, and the court hasn't done anything yet. Este juicio se tendría que llevar a cabo con la presencia del ex gobernador o puede estar ausente. Yes, without Governor Yarrington's presence, the indictment cannot go forward. En este juicio eh, se presentarían también los testigos protegidos que están haciendo estos señalamientos en contra de Tomás Yarrington. Yes, any witnesses that the government's granted immunity for, or any witnesses that the government is allegedly protecting for whatever reason have to be testifying. They have to have to testify in open court before the public, before the jury, and they have to be able to be challenged by the defense. ¿La defensa ya tuvo acceso a las evidencias del caso? I've seen nothing from the government. I've seen none of their evidence. 
I've only seen the indictment that the press gave me. I've seen no names of witnesses. I've seen no documents. I've seen no summaries of evidence. I've seen nothing that substantiates the government's case. Is this normal? Yes. Eh, ¿Se descartan eh, motivos políticos en esta nueva acción en contra del ex gobernador? I don't know if it's political in nature. We'll learn that as, the, as this matter progresses, I'll understand better whether there's political connections here. ¿Hay una relación entre la defensa en México y la defensa en Estados Unidos? ¿Se está trabajando de manera coordinada en algún eh, caso concreto, en alguna área concreta? Yes, I'm in touch with Governor Yerington's Mexican lawyers and uh, about what's going on in Mexico and they want to know what's going on here so there's a uh, we we talk about that periodically. Usted comentó que el eh, ex gobernador eh, o que el gobierno de Estados Unidos había pedido al ex gobernador que abandonara el país porque su visa había expirado. Previamente ya se había tenido algún problema en este sentido con la visa? Not that I'm aware of. He's come and gone in the United States for years without interruption. One day they decided that they didn't want him here anymore and they canceled his visa and they told him to leave. Up until that point in time, he was free to come and go. Uh, so, you know, it's somewhat perplexing why the United States government would ask him to leave if they had these accusations against him that he was involved in laundering of money. But uh, there's no evidence so far to prove he was laundering any money. Usted eh, también comentó en aquella conferencia de prensa en la Ciudad de México eh, el hecho de que no había contacto entre autoridades federales y la defensa. En este caso, en este momento ya hay canales de comunicación. No, I've had no communication with the United States prosecutors or anybody with the U.S. government after the uh, uh, unsealing of the indictment. ¿Por qué? Why is this? I have no idea. You have to ask the government that. They're the ones I would expect to communicate with me. All I've seen is an indictment from the press and uh, ¿Es nothing more. Esto? I would have expected the government would have called me on the phone to let me know about the unsealing of the indictment because they do know I represent Governor Yerington, but that's not transpired. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at that. I would have expected an invitation to come in, let them show me the evidence against him, let them show me what they have, let them show me who their witnesses are, let me show me show me the support for their accusations, but they've given no notice to me or no opportunity to look at that. I've asked before to look at the evidence against Yerington, but they've never made it available. ¿Hay un trato diferente por parte del gobierno de los Estados mm -hmm. Unidos al tratarse de un ex gobernador? It's not typical for the government to behave the way they're doing. I'm not suggesting it's wrong on the part of the government, but you would think that they would be more open and forthcoming about what information they have about the charges. If the charges were so solid and strong that you would think that they would just be more welcome to show them to me and uh, let me look at them. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre este y un caso típico? Well, in a normal case, the government doesn't throw somebody out of the country while they're investigating them and ask them later to come back. In a normal case, there's more communication with the defense about what's going on in the case so the defense has an opportunity to attack the charges. Here, the government's been very quiet and secret about what's going on. Everything from the grand jury through present, the government's been very secret about what they've been doing. And when the government operates in secrecy, it doesn't give the defense much of an opportunity to challenge anything. Esto le resta oportunidades a la defensa. It hinders the defense and it hinders the public an opportunity to find out whether, you know, something did happen or not. The public has a right to know too, and the public hasn't seen anything either. All the public has heard is accusations. The public's never seen any support for these accusations. And if I'm a member of the public, I'd want to know why this information has been kept so secret, why it hasn't been made available to the defense to challenge. If you want to have a fair trial, you got to make this stuff available. Considerando todo esto, ¿hay posibilidades o creen ustedes, esperan ustedes un juicio justo? Unlikely. Uh, I think people try to be fair, but when the government has an opportunity to present its side of the case for a long time, the public gets absorbed with the government's case and they become tainted. And they, there develops a bias and prejudice thinking that corruption is automatic in, the, uh, in Mexico and corruption is automatic in the uh, lower valley. ¿Considera usted que el gobierno mexicano debiera um, dar algún tipo de apoyo al ex gobernador? I think they need to do for Governor Yarrington what they would do for any citizen and respect the rights of the individual. Governor Yarrington's entitled in the United States to a presumption of innocence. 
The government hasn't proven anything. With this secret evidence, all they've done is shown a grand jury what they think is their side of the charges, but that hasn't been challenged by us. The public needs to respect Governor Errington's right to the presumption of innocence. As long as that happens, they'll have a fair trial. If that presumption of evidence shifts so there's a presumption of guilt, he'll never get a fair trial. Desde su experiencia, este es un caso difícil. No. This case is, no, it shouldn't be difficult. From what I understand, it shouldn't be, it should be relatively easy to beat these charges because from what I understand, there's a lot of people that cut deals with the government in return for favors. If people are in trouble, what they want to do is cut deals with the governments to get out of trouble and they'll blame anybody. Governor Yerington's a big person to blame. If you start blaming Governor Yerington, you get a lot of benefits for yourself. So once we prove that to a jury, I think a jury is going to see right through this case and see that there's a lot of people lying for their own benefit. Um, That's es, going to be a common theme in this case. ¿Está lista la defensa para el juicio? No. I don't even know what their support... I'd have to see the support for the charges. It wouldn't take us long to get ready, uh, but I'd have to look at the government's support for the charges and we'd have to be prepared to attack. ¿Para cuándo se espera eh, que pueda la defensa tener acceso a toda la información? I'm ready to look at it any time, but I haven't been shown anything. I've asked before, and nobody's ever approached me and said, here's the evidence against Yerington. ¿Es posible una contrademanda de, de la defensa contra el gobierno de Estados Unidos? Countersuits are generally not available, except if they indict Governor Yerington and he's acquitted of the charges. Governor Yerington could, if he proves that the government's case was brought maliciously, he could ask for his attorney's fees back. That's about the extent of a counterclaim. You can't counterclaim for anything other than attorney's fees, and you have to prove that the charges were brought for uh, in, in, in for uh, malicious purposes to harass an individual.